Hello everyone and welcome to Rambling Through History. My name is Jacob, and today we will be discussing the secret weapon of the Byzantine Empire. This weapon helped the Byzantine Empire survive for generations. This weapon would be later known as Greek Fire. Greek Fire was a devastating incendiary weapon used by the Byzantine Empire to defend against their enemies. The Byzantine people used this 7th century arsenal to repel mainly Arabian invasions for many years, particularly at sea. Now, while Greek fire wasn't the first incendiary weapon, it was definitely one of the most historically significant ones that we know of today. One of the first fascinating things that we know about the Greek fire is that no one was able to recreate it for themselves. They also even failed to recreate the machine that delivered it, and no one knows exactly what went into the mixture, even to this day. We will now look at the creation of Greek fire. Greek fire was created in the 7th century by Kalignikos of Hippolytus. He was a Jewish architect from Syria, and he moved to Constantinople due to his concerns about the Arabians capturing his city. As the story goes, Kalignikos experimented with a variety of materials until he discovered the perfect blend for an incendiary weapon. After this, he sent the formula to the Byzantine Emperor, and once the authorities could get their hands on all the materials, they developed a siphon that operated somewhat like a syringe as it propelled a deadly arsenal towards an enemy ship. Greek fire, although, was not only incredibly effective, but also intimidating. It reportedly produced a loud, roaring noise and large amounts of smoke, much like a breath of a dragon. And because of its devastating power, the formula for creating the weapon was a tightly guarded secret. It was known only to the Kalignikos family and the Byzantine emperors, and it was handed down from generation to generation. This practice was clearly effective because even when enemy armies managed to get their hands on the Greek fire, they had no idea how to recreate the technology for themselves. This is also the reason why the secret of making Greek fire was ultimately lost to history. Now, the main reason why, of course, that Greek fire was created was for the simple reason to prevent new land from falling into the hands of any invaders. And to that end, it was used to defend Constantinople against Arabian naval incursions for generations. The weapon was so effective at repelling enemy ships that it played a major role in ending the first Arabian siege of Constantinople in 674 to 678 AD. And it was similarly successful during the second Arabian siege of Constantinople from 717 to 718 AD, again causing massive damage to the Arabian navy. The weapon of course was continuously used in the empire for hundreds of years, not only in conflicts with outsiders but also in civil wars. And as time went on, it played a significant role in the continued survival of the Byzantine Empire. There are even some historians that argue by keeping the Byzantine Empire protected for centuries, Greek fire was instrumental in saving Western civilization from a massive invasion from the East. Now, Greek fire was known for its use at sea, but the Byzantines also used it in many other creative ways. The next best use for it was by the Byzantine Emperor Leo the Wise, and his 10th century military book, The Tactica, mentions a handheld version called the Chero Siphon, which is basically an ancient version of a flamethrower. This weapon was reportedly used in sieges both defensively and offensively to burn siege towers as well as defend against ones the enemies were using. Some authors also recommend using it on land to disrupt armies. Not only that, the Byzantines filled clay jars with Greek fire so they can hold function like grenades. Lastly, we'll be looking at the formula for Greek fire, which was attempted by many other people over the centuries. There are even a few historical records of the Arabians themselves using their version of Greek fire against the Crusaders during the 7th Crusade in the 13th century. Interestingly enough, the main reason why it's known as Greek fire today is because that's what the Crusaders called it. To other people's experiences, such as the Arabians, Bulgarians, and Russians, his more common name was actually Roman fire, since the Byzantines were a continuation of the Roman Empire. But none of the imitations could ever measure up to the real thing, and to this day, no one knows exactly what went into making this powerful weapon, although sulfur, pine raisin, and petrol have been proposed as the ingredients used in Greek fire. The true formula is nearly impossible to confirm, and some remain convinced that quicklime was a part of the mixture since it catches fire and water. And even today, the mystery of Greek fire continues to captivate historians and scientists who still try to figure out its contents. But regardless of how it had been made, one thing's for sure, 
Greek fire was one of the most influential military inventions of that time. And with that, that will be the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you did enjoy, please like and subscribe, and please also turn on your notifications so that every time I drop a new video, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you have any other video ideas or questions, please comment down below. I'd love to have answer any questions that you may have. But anyways, thanks again, and have a wonderful day.